kind of amazes me today is that I got a chance to record outside and then inside and now outside again. It's kind of nice when the weather allows you to move back out to the porch that I, I enjoy being on. Though, <laughs> sometimes some of the constraints that they tell me that I can't do out here are challenging. I think the day is coming soon when we're going to have to move in order to be able to enjoy what God has given us. You know? When it happens, it happens. But for the meantime, you know, it's good to enjoy today what God has given for weather and for peace. Because sometimes you need to change your perspective, you know, to look out over what God has done in your life and give thanks for how he's brought you through whatever it is you've gone through. People have at times said to me, you know, well, what do you mean God said? And I said, well, I don't know. I mean, God said it. God did it. God took care of it. Now, well, no, God doesn't operate that way. God only works if we exercise our faith and say that God said it. And we believe by promise that God said it. But we can't actually say, God spoke and said it to you. Oh, I didn't know that. So, should I go back and tell God that he's not allowed to speak because God already spoke and we already wrote it, so God can't speak it, and can't say it, can't make it personal. <laughs> Funny how people do that, isn't it? People would rather have a distant God than a personal God. I don't disagree with them, because frankly, I know that even when I've blown it, God saw me blow it, and he knows I'm going to blow it, and he sees me do it, and I'm thinking, oh man, half of me is like convicted, the other half of me is like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I feel like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know? Schizophrenic Christianity. But God wants us to move in the direction of love. He wants us to be involved in a personal relationship of love. He wants us to begin to feel His comforting presence guiding us in the direction we should go. So that we wouldn't be caught up in sin. We wouldn't be caught up in holiness. Rather, we would walk in gentleness, and meekness, and temperance, and kindness, in a way that's different from the world. Because the world right now is violent. Protest. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that there's no peace in the world? Peace is a kind of mixed up idea that people have. But they don't have any peace. They can't let it go and leave it alone. They have to have the last word. Sometimes they have to have the first word. God isn't in what they're doing because you can see it by how they're doing it. Do you see Jesus in it? I mean, some things, you know, people are sometimes promoting don't even have scripture in it. Wow. Imagine that, taking even the word of God out of it. Somehow, just can't imagine Christians doing that. But there are Christians who seem to want God to go away so they can have a say in what they do, what they are, and what they become. Because if God came to them and said, you know, I really don't want you playing pro football, what would they do? I really don't want you to be a pro basketball player, what would you do? I'd really rather you did what I said, you know, kind of like, you know, share the gospel, like, uh, not to, you know, the people who already have heard the gospel 10,000 times, 
But could you maybe go to the people who haven't heard it yet? Lord, that's kind of my calling. I'm a basketball player. I'm a football player. I'm a baseball player. Wow. Gonna do a lot of that in heaven. I'm sure there's a golden bat somewhere around flying. Hmm. Of course, there's always the Harleys in heaven, right? My God, my God. Where are you? Fellowship in the gospel. Fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 3.2 After sanctification, it is difficult to state what your aim in life is, because God has taken you up into His purposes by the Holy Spirit. He is using you now for His purposes throughout the world, as He used His Son for the purpose of our salvation. If you seek great things for yourself, God has called me for this, God has chosen me for that, you are putting a barrier to God's use of you. As long as you have a personal interest in your own character, or any set ambition or goal, you cannot get through into identification with God's interest in what He wants you to do. You can only get there by losing forever any idea of yourself, and by letting God take you right out of yourself and out into His purpose for the world and for salvation. And because your goings are of the Lord, you can never understand your own ways. For your thoughts are not His thoughts, neither are your ways His ways. I have to learn that the aim in life is God's, not my own. God is using me from His great personal standpoint. And all He asks of me is that I trust Him and never say, Lord, this gives me such heartache. To talk in that way makes me a clog. It makes me a barrier. It stops me from being used by God to accomplish what He wants, not only for me, but to do through me to accomplish to others what He would choose to reveal in me of what He has done for all of us. When I stop telling God what I want, He can catch me up for what He wants without there being any hindrance at all. Sometimes it's a question of denying yourself and taking up your cross and recognizing that's why you follow Him. He can catch me up for what He wants. He can crumble me up or He can exalt me. He can do anything He chooses. Is that the God you follow? Or is that something you refuse to do? He simply asked me to have implicit faith in himself and in his goodness. Self-pity is of the devil. If I go off on that line, I cannot be used by God for his purposes in the world. I have a world within the world in which I live, and God will never be able to get me outside of it because I am afraid of being frostbitten, because I am afraid to give up my world for his worldview. So you see, a lot of times people tell me a lot, well, this is my ministry. This is my calling. And I go, really? Okay, so how's it working out for you? Well, you know, 16 souls got saved. Okay. Cool. Well, you know, I, if I had this, you know, and... We raised, um, you know, we're trying to raise so many dollars for this, that, and the other thing, you know. As soon as we get this, that, you know, and we're this way and that way, we'll, we'll be this and that. Cool. Okay. Well, you know, it's really kind of interesting, you know, is that God wanted me to do this. And then, you know, I, I started that, and then God wanted me to do that. And then... I started that, and then God wanted me to do that, and my calling is this, but then that didn't work out, so my calling is this, and that didn't work out, so my calling is this, you know, and as soon as I get, you know, like, another campus built, another thousand people in, another 
and another and another. And I can see how it's working out for them. Because you see, God's purpose in saving you wasn't to save yourself. God's purpose for you was literally to follow Him. To follow Jesus. To do the things He did. Say the things He said. Live the way He lived. And be the way He was. You know, for 300 years, that's what people did. After He rose from the dead. You know, there's still people today that do what he said, live like he lived, even talk like he talked. Oh, there's some that try to say he was a Orthodox Jew, and some that try to say he was a, a missionary to South America, and then he was a missionary to North America. And then he went to here, and he went to there, and he was a man of many colors. <laughs> what are you doing with what Jesus wants you to do? Do you know what Jesus wants you to do? And if you don't, why not? You call me Lord, Lord, and such as I am. But if you call me Lord, why do you not do the things I say? I wonder. Where is your God today? Is he far away and you don't know what he wants you to do today? Or is he in your face trying to get you to accept what he wants you to do today. Only you and the Holy Spirit can answer that one. I can't. I can only look at you and see, oh, so, God now, instead of apostles and prophets and deacons and elders and all these things, you know, and teachers and sending people out as missionaries, now he sends them out as as basketball players, as rock stars, as worship leaders. Oh, I know the worship leader is a gift of the Spirit. Oh, I mean, it's a, it's an office of the church. I mean, it's a, it's in Scripture somewhere. Really. They that worship the Father would worship Him in spirit and in truth. But we need a worship leader to lead us. Don't we? Or do we? What is this whole idea of God calling or God's calling? You see, when God calls you, He says, Come here, follow me. But when man takes God's calling and makes it a religion, it's your ministry to the Lord, isn't it? Maybe God is calling you today. Maybe God is wanting to talk to you today. Maybe God has something to say. <laughs>